I have some orange um, aromatherapy going, which brings me happiness. It's behind me over there. It smells it's really smelling nice here. So, so once you make yourself comfortable, just take a nice big deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth, as you totally let go, releasing, letting go of what came before this moment, what will come after this moment, settling in to this present moment, feeling the temperature of the air around you, feeling the back body where it meets the mat, feeling that you're completely supported by the earth. So letting go of anything that no longer serves you, making space for what's good and what's helpful to you. Now beginning to turn to your breath, watching the gentle flow of air moving through your nasal passages, moving towards the back of your throat, down into your chest, into your belly. And then on the exhalation, feeling the air perhaps warmed by the body and just following it all the way out making that commitment to follow the breath in, staying with the breath and following the breath all the way out, perhaps coming to your home base to help you stay with the breath without judgment, without forcing, with ease, just follow the breath in a relaxed way if the mind wanders away from the breath, as soon as you notice that, just bring yourself back to the breath. No big deal. So just be with your breath. So our focus this morning is going to be on letting go. And I remembered a quote that I had on a poster in my bedroom when I was in high school, I think. Happiness is like a butterfly. The more you chase it, the more it eludes you. But if you turn your attention to other things, it will come and sit softly on your shoulder. And that's by Henry David Thoreau. So letting go, making space for things that can make you happy. Letting go of things that no longer serve you. So as we move through our practice today, we'll make space. We'll breathe in, making space. We'll breathe out letting go of we, what we no longer need or require. So with that being said, 
We'll float our arms up over our heads, stretching out through our fingertips, down through our body, breathing in to the space we've created, breathing out, letting go things that no longer serve us. And sometimes I visualize breathing in light, maybe a beautiful color, your favorite color. And then when I exhale, I think about little particles, almost like little dust particles that I'm just letting go. I don't need those anymore, but it's just something I do. Sometimes that visualization helps, but just breathing in fresh oxygen and then exhaling whatever no longer serves you. So take another round or two of breath and think about breathing in to the space you've created as you stretch out through your fingertips and down through your toes and breathing out, just letting go. And then we'll float our arms down as you're ready. And we'll bend our legs, bringing our knees in towards our chest. So squeeze the knees in towards your chest and then inhale as you push your knees away from you. And then squeeze on the exhale, squeeze the knees in towards your chest, letting go. And then pushing your knees away on your inhale. And just do this motion for a little bit. And then the next time your knees come in towards your chest, you can begin your bicycle. So just bring your arms up above your face and just begin to pedal your knees and your arms, moving them in circles. Engage your core. Pressing your back into your mat. Keep breathing, keep that nice rhythm going. Make bigger pedals with your legs or smaller. Just experiment a little bit. Just warming up our bodies as we begin. And as you're ready, bring the soles of your feet to the mat bringing your arms to stillness, perhaps resting your hands on your rib cage, and then just gently windshield wiper your knees from side to side, using your breath, inhaling to center and exhaling as you bring them to one side or the other. Just thinking about moving with ease and letting go, trying not to grip or hold. I guess what that poem says is the more we try to hold on to things, they really end up slipping through our fingers. So just taking what comes as it comes, without worrying about the past or the future, just being present. So we'll breathe in to the space we've created in our bodies as we move through our practice. And when we exhale, we'll just exhale out what we no longer need. So 
the next time your knees come up to center, you'll bring your shoulder and head up. You'll send your right leg out long. You'll send your left leg straight, sole of the foot up toward the ceiling. And then lift the right foot off. We're going to do like a scissors type thing. So inhale, and as you exhale, change legs. And just hold behind the thigh of the leg that's near your nose. So our legs are both straight and our shoulders and head are off the mat as we engage our core. So press that belly button towards the spine. If your head and neck get tired, you can of course release them down to the mat. Try to relax the shoulders. Point through your toes, really lengthen. And whenever you're ready to come down, release the head and shoulders, float your arms up over your head, soles of your feet can be on the mat. You can windshield wiper the knees gently back and forth if it feels good. Just allowing your breath to return to normal. Just bringing, keeping your arms up overhead and bringing your knees to stillness. We'll come into a reclined twist. So we'll take that left thigh and stack it on the right thigh. So we'll cross our legs. We'll shift our hips left and allow our knees to fall towards the right. We can float our arms down in an upside down V. And if it's comfortable on the neck, you can look away from your knees. And just breathe in, making space. And then breathe out, letting go. Letting go of any gripping you might be doing or any holding. And just sink into your mat. Every time I inhale, I'm smelling that nice aroma of orange. And just notice if you are holding or gripping or have you allowed yourself to just let go. Just use your breath to help you let go. And then when you're ready, return your head to center. Inhale your knees up to center also as you uncross them and then take the right thigh on top of the left. And then we'll shift the hips towards the right, allowing our knees to fall left. And if you looked away from your knees on the other side, you might 
consider doing the same thing just to, on this side, just to keep yourself in balance. And just allow the body to breathe. No need for you to control it in any way, just your body knows how to breathe on its own. So just allow the breath to flow in its natural rhythm. As you breathe in to make space, breathe out to let go. Next inhalation, just bring your knees back to center as you uncross. And you might, if you have a block nearby, you might consider um, using the block, placing the smaller side between the knees. So there's the wide side, and then it's about four inches or so that side, placing that between your knees as you walk your feet up toward your bottom. And if you don't have a block, no problem. If you do have a block, just squeeze the block between your thighs. And on your next inhalation, just bring the hips up towards the sky. So we'll come into a bridge for Elizabeth <laughs> and for all of us. So we'll hold our bridge at the top for a few moments. So we're pressing in to the soles of our feet pressing the back of our shoulders and back of our upper arms into the mat, lifting our chest, lifting our hips, keeping our breath flowing, squeezing the block if you have a block between your thighs, just activating the muscles in our glutes and in our legs. And then as you're ready, Roll down slowly so that your bottom comes down last. And you can take the block out if you used a block. And now we'll make our way up to seated in our chosen way. If you want to turn to your side and push yourself up, if you want to bring your feet up and hold behind your thighs and rock, you can also cross at the ankles or not, either way. And then if you'd like a blanket or a towel underneath your hips, just sitting on the edge, it feels very nice. And it helps us have a nice tall spine. So we'll sit up nice and tall and we're going to come into some arm circles. We'll take the left arm and we'll make a big hula hoop circle. And we'll make about three of these going back, big hula hoop. So inhale as you bring your arm up, exhale as you bring it down. I don't know if that was three, but we'll do one more. Just feel that shoulder and lubricating. And then we'll take the other arm and we'll go back. Nice and slow and mindful using our breath, inhaling as we lift it, exhaling as we bring it down, inhaling, and then exhaling. And now we'll come back to the left side and we'll swim forward, same thing. Exhale down, inhale, exhale, or however your breath moves. There's no right or wrong. And then we'll switch to the other side, swimming forward with the right arm, being mindful of that shoulder joint, 
noticing the difference on the left and on the right. And then we'll come to stillness, placing our hands on our knees. We'll shrug our shoulders up, hold them tight, 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 and then release. Bring our shoulders up, holding, and then release, letting go. One more time, holding, and then letting go. We'll take our left arm, bring it across our body, support it with the right elbow, and just pull back, pull that left arm back towards the back of the room a little bit. Just be gentle, but feel that stretch in the back of your arm. And then we'll release and we'll come to the other side. Feel that nice stretch in the back of your arm. And then we'll release. We'll send the left arm up, stretch through the fingertips, making space, bend your elbow, pat your back, take your right hand, sweep it around, bend at the elbow and walk the fingertips towards each other. And so that left elbow is pointing towards the sky. And even if the fingertips aren't close, you're still getting a nice stretch. Back off if there's anything that's uncomfortable, but we want range of motion. And then release gently. And then we'll stretch the right fingertips up, really stretching up, bend at the elbow, pat yourself on the back, good job. And then send the left hand, sweep it around, bend at the elbow and send the left fingertips up towards the right. And Sometimes you have to wiggle a little bit to kind of get it somewhat comfortable. You might notice a difference. I'm sure you do on one side or the other. Um, one side you might be able to really get the fingertips closer, but no problem. Whatever we can do is movement and helping our joints and muscles become more flexible and then release and you can kind of shake the shoulders out a little bit, even rotate the shoulders around. And we're going to come to eagle arms. So we know that we'll make an L with our left arm, stretch out through the right fingertips as we sweep them down and around, stacking the elbows, wrapping the forearms around, bringing the palms together as best we're able. Bring your elbows away from you and then use your breath, inhaling up and exhaling down. You can even close your eyes and just notice that stretch across the back of your shoulders, releasing tension if there's any tension where we often hold it in the shoulders. Use the breath, inhaling up, exhaling down. Release the arms. And we'll make an L with the right arm. Send the left fingertips, stretch them out away from the body and then sweep that left arm down and around. Wrap the forearms, the palms come to meet, elbows away and again, inhale up, exhale down. Feel the stretch across the shoulders. And as you're ready, release the arms. We'll come into some uh, head neck roll. So dropping chin to chest, just mindfully rotate the head around. Go one way for two or three rotations. Noticing where there might be tightness. And then reverse your direction as you're ready. And as you're ready, come to stillness. 
taking your time. And once you have come to stillness, send your legs out in front of you. Sit up nice and tall. Bring the left knee in towards you as you hold on to that left knee with your right arm or your right hand or squeeze that left knee in towards you, sending your fingertips out in front of you, setting up nice and tall before you twist. And then follow the fingertip, the left fingertips as you move them around so that they come behind you. And then bring the fingertips towards your body, pointing towards your left hip as you look out over your left shoulder, sitting up nice and tall. And then gently release to center, back to the front. Send the left leg out. Bring the right knee in towards your chest, hugging that right knee with your left arm, your left hand. Send your right fingertips out in front of you. Sit up nice and tall, nice tall spine. And then follow your right fingertips as you move them around, 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 so that they're behind you and then bring them in towards your right hip, fingertips pointing towards your hip, and look out over your right shoulder, sitting up nice and tall. And then slowly release back to the front, and we'll come on to our knees for table. So wrists right underneath our shoulders, knees right under our hips. And we'll just come into our cat cow. So we all know our cat cow. So just use your breath to come in to your own cat cow. And then the next time you come to table, you can bring yourself to stillness. And we're going to curl our toes under as you're ready. So looking down at your hands, making sure that your fingers are spread nice and wide. The thumbs can be in a little closer to the index finger, but the rest of the fingers spread nice and wide. And then as you're ready, curl your toes, send your hips up towards the sky. Come onto your toes and then alternate bending your knees, bending generously, really moving the hips, pedaling it out. And then as ready, you can come onto your toes and then settle back towards your heels, resting in your down dog. Now, if you have a block or a blanket nearby, you might consider using it. We're going to come into pigeon, but we won't hold pigeon too, too long. So you can definitely do it without a block or a blanket, but the block or the blanket would go under the hip. So when we come into it, it'll be our left hip that you place the block or blanket. So we're going to send the left leg up towards the sky. So three-legged dog will look forward as we bring that left leg forward, bending and um, coming down onto that left knee. I know Elizabeth, this is gonna be tough. So um, choose another pose for you, but the rest of us, you, know, you might wanna look at me, but so your left knee is forward your right leg is out straight 
And so you're going to stretch out through that right leg. So send your toes towards the bottom of your mat on the right leg. And then if you're able, oh, you'll, you'll bring your blanket underneath the left hip and you want the hips both to be facing forward. And then we'll come down to our elbows if you're able. And we're just going to rest here for a moment. So having the block under the left hip will enable you to let go. Uh, I mean, I'm up on my elbows and I'm not totally, totally relaxed because I'm holding myself up a little bit, but I feel pretty good. So make sure that you feel comfortable. Um, you can be sitting Elizabeth in Dandasana, that stick pose. So that's where your legs are out in front of you and your spine is nice and tall. You could do something like that and even um, do some forward folds, Elizabeth, like inhaling and then as you exhale, fold at your hip creases because this is definitely compressing the back of our knees. But we're getting a very nice stretch in our left hip flexor. And then as you're ready, we're going to come up onto our hands, curl our back toes, our right toes under, push up and come back into down dog. And then we'll send the right leg up for three-legged dog, look forward, shift the body forward and bring the right knee to the mat as you walk the left foot towards the bottom of your mat. So straighten that left leg and come down onto your elbows if it's comfortable. If you have a block, you can put it under the right hip. And we want our hips both to be square to the front of the mat. And so we'll just hang out here for a couple of moments, a couple of rounds of breath. And if this is really uncomfortable, um, choose another pose. You can e even come into child's pose or you can come up to down dog. But you're getting a nice stretch in that right hip flexor. And everybody's body is different. Some people, this I know a couple of people in our class, this is very comfortable for them and they don't need a block. Their hips are not as tight as others, but it benefits everyone if it's comfortable for you. Even if it's slightly uncomfortable, uncomfortable as it was for me for a long time. Now I, I rather enjoy it. Okay, um, bringing our hands to the mat, curling the left toes under, lifting up back into down dog. Walking our hands towards our feet, bending our knees if you'd like, coming down to the mat in like a frog position. Um, and if you're able, bringing your feet to the mat with the, the heels in and the toes pointing out wide. I'll turn to the front so you can see. Um, sometimes people like to have a blanket under their heels. So this is malasana. And then you press into your inner knee area with your elbows. And this again is a resting pose, but if it's not comfortable, if you have knee issues, um, you may decide to come up to Tadasana without doing Malasana. And as you're ready, you can come up to standing and bring yourself to Tadasana. So rocking from side to side, feeling the earth beneath your feet, coming to stillness as you're ready. Really lifting through the instep, through the kneecaps, through the thighs, engaging your core, bringing your, your shoulders up, back and down, allowing your palms to face forward, arms dangling, chin parallel to the earth as you extend through your crown, making space 
in the body, taking a couple of nice deep inhalations, breathing into the space you've created, exhaling, letting go, that which you no longer need. Notice your breath, if it's flowing freely or if you're holding in any way and allow yourself to release and let go. Sometimes using ujjayi breath reminds us of that gentle flow like the ocean, ocean breath. And if your eyes are closed, just flutter the eyes open. And we're going to face the um, left side, bringing the left foot forward, the right foot back. Both feet are more or less pointing forward. The back foot can be um, at a 45 degree angle or not totally straight. And then find your stance. Sometimes I just wiggle my feet forward or back to find a comfortable stance. So we're coming into warrior one. So our hips, we want to square to the front of the mat, relax the shoulders down the back, and then inhale the arms up, interlace the fingers and keep the index fingers pointed. So the steeple hand, and then exhale and bend the front knee. So we'll keep that knee over the ankle and we'll press into the back heel and making space. So really extending those fingertips, the index fingers up towards the sky to create space, pressing into the back heel, sending the tailbone towards the earth. That front left knee is bent, hips and shoulders square to the front of the mat. And just lift the rib cage and lift the index fingers, the arms up creating space and breathe into that space and exhale, letting go. Releasing the hands, turning the palms away as you bring the arms down and then we'll turn the feet so that they're parallel Take a breath here. And then we're going to turn the feet so that the right foot is pointing towards the front. The back foot could be at a 45 degree angle. Find your comfortable stance. Um, square your hips to the front of your mat. Squeeze the shoulder blades together to open the chest. And then inhale the arms up. Interlace the fingers. Uh, except for the index finger and exhale, bend the front knee, press into the left heel and extend the index fingers up towards the sky, make space, breathe into that space that you've made and then exhale, letting go of anything that no longer serves you. Send the tailbone towards the earth. Press into that back heel. Big toe mound of the front foot. Send the index fingers up towards the sky, creating that space in the rib cage. Turn the palms away as you let go of your fingers and float the arms down. Bring the feet parallel, clasp the hands behind the back, squeeze the shoulder blades together as you float forward, leading with your heart center. Crown of head will come towards the earth, arms will come off the back. Feel the space you've created again. Take a breath into that space and then breathe out, letting go.
undo your, well, bring your hands down towards your back before you come up. Undo your hands once they're down on your back and bring them to the mat. And then we'll heel toe our feet together. Take our hands and our knees can be bent. Press into the front of our shins. Come up for a flat back. Exhale, bring the hands to the mat, coming down to your knees, come onto your back. And once you're on your back, you can bring your knees to your chest. And then hands on your kneecaps, make some small circles, gradually make your circles bigger nice and loose, massaging your back, stopping and spending extra time any place in your back that needs extra attention. And then whenever you're ready, reversing your direction. just spending as much time massaging your back as you'd like. And whenever you're ready, bringing yourself to a comfortable Shavasana, allowing the feet to be wide on the mat, allowing the arms to be away from the body with the palms facing up. And just noticing how your body is feeling, how your mind is feeling. Taking a nice deep breath in through your nose and then out through your mouth, letting go. you'd like to join me with your hands in Anjali Mudra prayer position, thumbs at your heart center. May you breathe in happiness throughout your day and exhale anything or let go of anything that no longer serves you. Namaste. Thank you.